Hey Scotty, would you like to dive back into Ravnica with me? Ooh, that is much better. Okay, let's do that. Hello everyone and welcome to another one of our Lazy Swim deck reviews. The series where Scotty and I take the time to go through the precon decks, read out the cards inside, give you an idea of how strong they are, and if they synergize with a given commander, the cast to the deck, and how good the product is straight out of the box. At the end we score each deck inside of an expansion against each other out of 10, so grab your favorite drink, sit down, lay back and relax as we dive into this review. And I'm your host Vlad, this is Scotty, thank you very much Scotty for that wonderful introduction. And today we are having a look at the next Murders of Karlov Manor deck, this is a deep Clue C. The pun is very much intended here. It is clue tokens and card advantage. And I wonder if it's going to be Merfolk as well. This is the third of the decks that we are now reviewing. And we've already reviewed the first ones, the Blame Game and Revenant Recon. And this is going to be the next one. This is the first of them that is actually three colors. The other one were Boris and the Mirror. This is Bant. So it's going to be very interesting. As usual, you get a sample booster pack for the collectors and then you get the 100 card deck with only 12 new cards, a deck box, the 10 tokens, the foilage, display commander, the life wheel, a strategy insert, and a reference card. So let's, let's dive into this. And yeah, as we're finishing up these commander decks, uh, <laughs> roached out for a red herring, of course. Again, the puns are very much intended here. So yeah, we are a bit behind. We have just released our car marketplace, UK exclusive, very friendly sharks that could UK. So if you want to buy or sell cars like these, you can find them on our website at very friendly sharks that could UK. I'll leave a link in the description down below, but we do not sell cars ourselves. Only our users do. So yeah, shameless plug over. We have a couple Couple of tokens here which are kind of strange and then you have some plus one plus one tokens and then we have the insert which always is a nice addition if you're into the lore a little bit to try and figure out why the commander is the commander and who they are and what they do so i'll try and keep that in shot and you can pause it if necessary and then on the back you get a bit about the deck and uh, the commander rules very nice and that's it and then we get get the deck box which will only hold the deck without it being properly sleeved so yeah there you go and I'm, i think i'm already breaking mine and then you get the life counter the collector booster sample and the deck proper so let's open the collector booster sample as usual there are three cards in here one of them is a token and then two of them are just examples of the different showcase variants that you can find in the game and one of them is a rare or mythic audience with trosani is our rare and they're both in the magnifying lens version very beautiful and voila and so let's go in to the deck proper and let's open up and look so yeah the revenant recon so far that reanimate was really really good i staggered it at a seven i think it could have gone up to a 7.5 realistically looking back at it but we'll see well, uh, with the last deck we'll try and give a recap and maybe adjust some of those cores but realistically those decks were pretty fun and interesting and uh, yeah, I'm hoping this continues. If you are new here, uh, what we do here is we look at the deck and we analyze it around the commander that is given, not the general. So we look at how every single card synergizes with the commander in general and does it do what the deck wants to do, which is what the commander wants. So with that out of the way, we have Morska, Undersea Sleuth. Without giving Fish Detective 2, 3 and it's banned, you have no maximum hand size at the beginning of your upkeep you get to investigate so you create those clue tokens and whenever you draw your second card each turn put two plus one plus one counters on undersea sleuth it doesn't have flying or anything like that so it's just gonna grow with two counters which is really nice because even though it's limited to once per turn because it's your second card it is still nice because you're getting two counters on it so it's counters it's draws and it creates clue tokens so let's see what the deck does with all these information so it wants to draw and create clue tokens maybe they'll use those tokens in other ways as well as artifacts would do sometimes and yeah the counters as well with simic does a lot with counters so that's that now let's look at the general 
It's Sophia Dogged Detective. It's a 3-4 human detective that costs four. And when it enters the battlefield, you create Tiny, a legendary 2-2 green dog detective creature token with trample. And then for one, you sacrifice an artifact token, one of the clues, put a plus one, plus one counter on each dog you control. So there might be more than just one dog here. Whenever a dog you control deals combat damage to a player, create a food token, then investigate. Now, this seems more like a dog themed commander. Yes, you can put plus one, plus one counters, but it's only on each dog. And yes, you can continue to create um, more tokens, but we'll see how the deck uses it. It might be that it does synergize in a way, depending on how they built the deck. If there's a lot of dogs, yeah, but if they didn't, then uh, yeah, this is gonna be a bit of a disappointment. So yeah, here we have, oh, tiny, that's cute. It's cool. And here we have all the tokens, as you can imagine. And then we will continue on to the beautiful, beautiful deck proper. First up, we have Armed with Proof. It's an enchantment, we saw it before. It costs three, it's white, and when it enters battlefield, they investigate twice. So you create two of those tokens, and then clues you control our equipment, and you can equip them for two generic, and it gets the creature plus two plus zero. So you do something with those clues, it's synergistic, it's interesting. I'll hold my judgment up until the very end, but I think it might be a, an okay card in this deck. Then we have the Merchant of Truth, it's a 2-5 angel detective, so the detective theme continues. Could be a detective tribal as well, because in the end, the Morska is a detective as well so we'll see it's not a merfolk i thought it would be merfolk but it's not so it has flying and whenever a non-creature non-token creature sorry you control dies investigate and then clues you control have exalted so any creature dies you get to exalt your clues so whenever creature you control attacks alone that creature gets plus one plus one until the end of the turn for each instant of exalted among the permanent control that makes this deck insanely strong because well yeah clues you control have exalted as so long as this stays on the table your creature is gonna grow in humongous size absolutely freaking lootly and very quickly so absolutely it's a good one. Oh, i love this illustration as well by faye dalton serene sleuth it's a 2-2 human detector that costs two when it enters the battlefield you get to create a clue and at the beginning of combat in your turn you investigate for each goaded creature you control then each creature you control is no longer goaded so this is a counter to the goaded the blame game deck it's not really i mean it could be a little bit in the way of yes it's synergistic because it creates a, a, a token a clue token when it comes into play and also because it is a detective but if it's only just for that and it doesn't really do much then you can remove it then we have and i will put it here because of that detective of the month two three human detective that is blue and has it costs three it has a send so if you control 10 or more permanents you get the city's blessing as long as you have the blessing the testers you control can't be blocked so yep it might be that tribals is on the way as well it's a weird one we'll see and then Whenever you draw your second card each turn, you create a 2-2 white blue detective creature token. So it synergizes with the commander fairly properly. Again, the second card, you get to create and do something with the second card. So that's there. And it seems like this is going to be a fun deck. I just hope it doesn't go too much in too many directions because so far we have the tokens generation, then you have the detective tribal, and also you will have the counters and the draws. So if you don't balance it out, it could be a jack of all trades and king of none as many pre-con decks to be. So we'll see how it goes. Follow the bodies as the sorcery costs three is blue, has gravestorm, when you cast a spell, copied for each permanent put into a graveyard from the battlefield of stern. Then you get to investigate. Um, it's interesting if you have a board wipe to use it, then it's really good. Otherwise, it's very situational in a hundred card deck. Well, that's not going to be so easy to use. Um, so keep that in mind. Tangle Trove Kelp is a six six clue plant. <laughs> That's cool. That costs seven. It's blue with double pips. It has ward two, and at the beginning of each combat, other clues you control become six six plant creatures in addition to their other types until the end of turn. And then you can sacrifice it to draw a card. Very strong for the clue aspect of this deck. It takes a while, but you can easily ramp in green. So if they have ways of generating some some ramp, which I would reckon that they do, that can be very strong. Then we have Inocus Researcher. It's a three four center detective. Costs four is green has parlay whenever innocuous researcher attacks each player reveals the top card of their library for each non-land card revealed this way you get to investigate then each player draws a card and at the beginning of your hand 
passive. You may untap all lines you control. If you do, you can't cast spells until your next turn. Huh. This is interesting. Unless you transform your lands into creatures, it's kind of meh. I don't really see the point because you can't cast any spells. You can use abilities, but that's about it. And uh, yeah, regarding the, the first part, it's, it's not bad. Each player draws a card. So I don't like giving advantages. You can create, um, of course, clues thanks to it. And it's kind of synergistic, but I don't want to keep it in. I want to keep it in because of the fact that it gives advantages to my opponents. That's just me though. Keep it there. On the trail is an enchantment it costs two is green whenever you draw your second card each turn you may put a land card from your hand onto the battlefield tent so then again it's synergistic with the commander it's an extra land I like it very much and i will keep it in the deck because it's synergistic with the commander and you can ramp yourself with that knowledge is power is an enchantment it costs five which is your control get plus x plus x whatever x is the number of cards you draw in this turn this could be a very good alpha strike if you start building up that draw ability for sure and uh, i mean this guy draws cards um this one doesn't do, 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 do. whenever you're drawn do, 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 do. so far we haven't seen a lot of draw it's just through the clues that you're getting to do that so far so blue has a lot of draw potential so we'll see if they only want you to use clues and if so then you're gonna have to rack up some mana for sure to be able to to do that because if you're going to use i don't know sack three clues to draw three cards then it, this is gonna cost you uh, 11 so that's really not worth it you know um we'll see we'll see ransom note it's here it draws your card it's a clue. It synergizes with the deck because it is a clue. That's about it. Aerial Extortionist is a 4-3 bird soldier that costs 5. It's white, has flying when it enters the battlefield. Oh. Or deals common damage to a player. Exile up to one target non-land permanent for as long as that card remains exiled. Its owner may cast it whenever another player casts a spell from anywhere other than their hand. Draw a card. Very annoying. I usually don't like the um whole aspect of exiling temporarily but this allows you to draw cards in an intelligent way and in, in an extra intelligent way and get rid of those annoying little non-land permanents and the fact that it's a non-land permanent can be anything so that's really really good i like that and it allows you to draw so yep i'll put it in just like it's not bad benny brax zoologist is a three two that costs four it's an elf druid has convoke and at the beginning of your end step if you created a token this turn draw a card there you go draw engine very nice farewell makes it your turn very beautiful love this card absolutely freaking lovely. a great card keep it in please fumigate sorcery costs five this royal creatures you gain one life for each creature destroy this way another good wipe um it gains you some life unlike the wrath of god or damnation so quite good then we get um organic extinction another board wipe destroy all non-artifact creatures okay improvise you don't have a lot of artifact creatures except for that tangled trove kelp so it really depends if you play a lot of artifact creatures great otherwise um yeah it depends on how minute you have your army if you create a lot of tokens that are creatures of course which i hope it doesn't go too much into that aspect then yeah keep this in um otherwise yeah but it, it will become a very different deck we'll see how it goes um otherwise there are better removals like austere command for example top this and it's in all Almost every other deck. Search the premises. It's wide. It costs four. It's an enchantment whenever a creature attacks you or a planeswalker you control. Investigate. Great way to create more clues. Very nice. And then you can draw from that. Palandra, Sky Dreamer. Two four Merfolk Wizard. It costs four. It's blue. Whenever you draw your second card, you turn. Then synergy. Create two two blue Drake creature token with flying. Whenever you draw your fifth card, you turn. Alandra, Sky Dreamer, Drake, Sea Control and drakes you control each get plus x plus x until the end of turn where x is the number of cards in your hand very very good and because you know most of these cards are just draw a card you can either suck one clue and most of these effects are already done and for this one if you get to the fifth one so if you have extra draw effects and stronger very nice i like it then we have confirm suspicions counter target spell for five or and then investigate three times it's a fairly expensive counter spell but the fact that it gives you three clues might be worth it for you it really does depend it does two things at once but it's fairly expensive mm, i'll leave it up to you depending on how you build the deck it could be that it's good to keep if you need more 
clue generation. It is synergistic though. Then we have Ethereal Investigators, a 2-3 spirit that costs four, has flying, and when it enters the battlefield, you investigate X times where X is the number of opponents you have, so up to three. Whenever you draw your second card each turn, you create a 1-1 one, one white spirit your token with flying. So again, synergistic with the second card that you draw, create more clue tokens, you create some more um, tokens as well that you can then use not bad at all then we have finale or revelation it's a sorcery x and to blue back from the war the spark i think draw x cards if x is 10 or more instead shuffle your graveyard into your library draw x cards untapped up to five lands and you have no maximum hand size for the rest of the game and then it's a good draw it's nice because it does do a lot of the extra effects and if you can pump into it in a game you can get a lot it depends if you are going to go the route of having a lot of ramp if you are then keep this in otherwise swap it for better card draw maybe even timely card draw like rhystic study or stuff that gives you draw over time is better than all at once all plopped up together so unless you have ramp i wouldn't advise you to keep this necessarily but it's up to you it depends on the cards that you have then we have kappa cannoneer and so it's a 4-4 turtle warrior it was part of the kamigawa decks the commander decks if i'm not mistaken it costs six and it's blue it has improvised so your artifacts each help to cast this but tap in one get one generic and it has ward four and whenever an artifact enters the battlefield under your control you put a plus one plus one counter on counter here and it cannot be blocked this turn very good synergy very 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 good now we have mechanized production it's an aura cost four and it's blue enchant an artifact you control at the beginning of your upkeep create a co a token that's a copy of the enchanted artifact and if you have eight or more artifacts with the same name as another you win the game and guess what clues this is gonna be a your win con a very very easy win con with clues i will keep that in for sure nadir kraken it's a two three kraken it costs three blue with double blue pip whenever you draw a card you may pay one generic if you do you put a plus one plus one counter on it and create a one one blue tentacle creature token this is more of a it synergizes yes ish but it's more synergy adjacent is not necessarily um it synergizes with that let's keep it but i wouldn't keep it in i would just put it in the pile that it synergizes but yeah uh shimmer dragon is a five six dragon cost six flying from throne of the drain as long as you control four more artifacts really easy and this shimmer dragon has hex proof and then tap two untap artifacts you control to draw a card can be an interesting one it depends how much you want to lean into this the artifact theme and uh, yeah it can be annoying and it could be a really good card it's up to you i think it's kind of synergistic because it draws your card and you don't have to sack and of course it's a five six flyer it's still very annoying the fairies ageless insight costs four is a legendary enchantment if you would draw a card except the first one you draw in each of your draw steps draw two cards instead allowing you to get more out of your clues the first time you do that or any other than so this is amazing and i really really love it in this deck it's a legendary enchantment too then we have tezzeret the betrayer of flash it's a planeswalker has four loyalty costs four first activated ability of an artifact you activate eastern costs two less to active very 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 strong for the clues which makes the first one go free and then you can trigger so many things then you draw two cards then it's card two cards unless you discard an artifact card you have artifact cards but so far unless you want to discard the ransom you don't want to discard that many target uh, minus two is target artifact becomes an artifact creature if it is in a vehicle it has base power and toughness four or four so that's very good for any of your tokens and then minus six you get an emblem with whenever an artifact you control becomes tapped draw a card okay so yeah i like it it's synergistic with this deck i see why they put it in and i would keep it in necessarily there might be some better tesseret um planeswalkers that synergize better with artifacts in general and you can go fetch artifacts in the deck and so on and so forth but again the, the clue here is in the clue <laughs> so you want to enable those clues and uh, being able to do that with this it's not bad and i would keep it and also it's the first planeswalker i think we saw no it's the second one because there's also else from the blame game anyway thought monitor it's a 2 2 construct that costs seven but it has affinity for artifacts and when it's just about you draw two cards if you want to keep this great there are better ways to go the artifact route it draws you two cards it is synergistic but you know 
Horny Queen, no. No, 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 why? They keep putting back the Horny Queen Index. It's it's an old card, it doesn't make sense. It creates tokens and it's really expensive, useless, keep it out. Joel Rail, Monvuli Recluse, I apologize if I butchered that. It's a one, two human droid that costs two and it's green. Whenever you draw your second card, turn, you create a two, two green cat token so great synergizes with commander and the general theme of the deck and then for six until the end of turn creatures you control base power and toughness xx where x is the number of cards in your hand with the fact that you draw so many cards in so many ways absolutely very good card and that could be an alpha strike then we have killer service it's an enchantment cost three it's green when it enters battle three, we create a number of food tokens equal to the number of opponents you have three and at the beginning of your end step you may pay two generic sacrifice the token if you do you create a four four green rhino creature token okay so you can stack the food token instead of stacking um a clue token if you don't need a life from the food token and it replaces itself it goes down into the food tokens area though and into the token gen token generation and artifact generation and uh, that for that i would put it here Ooh, tireless tracker mr return again so three two scout cost three and has landfall whenever land enters the battlefield under control you get to investigate and whenever you sacrifice a clue you put a plus one plus one counter on tireless tracker without need to explain why this goes right there adrex and nev twin casters two two merfolk wizard that costs four has war two and if one or more tokens will be created on your control twice that many of those tokens are created instead there are in white a lot of very good effects in mythic um that have been printed in the past few expansions there was the elish norn there was the uh the god and the i think it was the god uh, the lost governors of ixon the white god so if you want to go down that route of similar there are i think a bit better that could replace this but e either way it's not bad you create twice that many it's the cheap version of that so not bad chulain taylor of tales oh my god i haven't seen the teller of tales in a long time two four human druid that costs five has vigilance whenever you cast a creature spell draw a card then you may put a land card from your hand onto the battlefield and then for three tap return tiger creature you control to understand yeah uh it's great because this allows you to ramp quicker and also draw quicker. so overall very very good card and it does synergize with the rest of disorder in the court is an instant it costs x and then azurius x X target creatures then investigate X times return at the exile to the battlefield tapped under the owner's control at the beginning of your X and step can help re-enable some of your ETBs and it's not double X so it shouldn't be too expensive to create extra clues uh, there are better ways to wipe the board if you're using it as a board wipe but if you're using a synergy it would be card for and we have Azix fractal bloom as a 4-4 fractal legendary creature, it costs 6, has flying. First time you would create one or more tokens during each turn of your turns, you may instead choose a creature other than this card and create that many tokens that are copies of that creature. So instead of creating copies or extras of a clue, you can create copies of any other card that is card. Can be very, very strong. There are those effects, but again, it depends on if you want to go the way of creating token and copies of tokens or if you want to go the way of plus one in plus one in or if you want to go the way of drawing you know it's it's kind of how do you want to do that uh it is synergistic with the theme as a whole but it's not directly synergistic you know so i will put it there hydro crisis of case uh, hydro crisis of course this is a zero zero jellyfish hydro beast plus x and then simic when you cast this spell you can half x life draw half x cards run down each time fly and trample and then just battlefield with x plus one plus one counters it's not synergistic with a commander other than the fact that you draw the cards but it is very similar in, in theme with the commander and what it wants to do and it's a very good card that i would not remove this deck if especially you want to play around with those counters and buffing up then we have koma wow cosmo serpent is a six six that costs a whooping seven it's a legendary creature this spot cannot be countered and at the beginning of each upkeep you create a three three serpent token named koma's coil sacrifice another serpent choose one target 
tap target permanent its activated abilities cannot be activated this turn or this creature gains indestructible until the end of turn very 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 strong going down the route of tokens though so again not super synergistic with the deck but it's a very strong creature very nice reprints here a lot of value it depends on how you build the deck if you want to keep that in lotus cryptozoologist is a one two snake elf scout that costs simic and whenever another non-token creature enters the battlefield under your control you get to investigate so that's very good for synergistic then you tap sack x clues target opponent reveals the top x cards of the library you may put a non-land permanent card with the mana value x or less among them onto the battlefield control that player put the rest of the bottom of the library in a random order now this is one of those things that it's a bit annoying because um uh, you can't really know it's a gamble right so when you're doing this is always a gamble and you could be sacking some clues and getting nothing or you could be second and getting something first part is really good the card is synergistic overall i would say keep but it's you know if you have a lot better then i would say use then we have silvana explorer return is a 2-4 elf scout that costs three and it's celestia and then it has parlay tap each player reveals the top card of the library for each non-land card revealed this way add one green and you gain one life then each player draws a card again if you want to give advantages to your opponents keep it but i i will keep this nonetheless because it allows you to ramp and it's still very nice and like the other one and yes it's synergistic because it allows you to ramp into all the other things that we're talking about and it allows you to draw academy manufacturer makes a return as assembly worker and costs three generic it's an artifact and creature uh, one three uh, you would create a, if you create a clue food or treasure token instead create one each very very good and it is i will put it as synergistic idol of uh, idol of oblivion allows you to basically draw extra cards yes you could create that big token but it's meh inspiring statuary non artifact spells you cast have improvised which means that you can use your artifacts to transform your spells into affinity basically kind of by tapping those artifacts to cast them and it only costs three very very strong card i love using this overall as a it's a great card for affinity decks but artifact decks or decks that have a lot of artifacts it's really good nettle cyst is cost three generic as an equipment is a living weapon you can equip it for two generic as well and equip creature gets plus one plus one for each artifact and or enchantment you control can be really really strong can be can be it depends on how much you push the whole token generation of those artifacts right not just creatures but i'm talking about the clues so if you go that route maybe perhaps the one otherwise well it's up to you to decide psychosis crawler is a star star for rex and holler it costs five genetic oh by the way these are great reprints the spine statuary analysis psychosis really great it's an artifact creature for x and horror its power and toughness are each equal to the number of cards in your hand whenever you draw a card each one loses a life synergistic with the deck can be really annoying and yeah you're getting so much advantage and this can be really 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 good in in general um so i will i will keep it I, I, maybe i'm a little bit biased maybe it's not as good but anyway then we have the canopy vista and it's just battlefield tap so the lands we'll see a little bit we have the exotic orchard irrigated farmland the prayer stream okay that's good prairie is always nice sky cloud expanse fire of industry okay that's nice yeah temples as usual the temples because they always have to put the temples in okay i would think that the land base is not the strongest but it's still better than it used to be at around the commander masters there's that source of plushers great removal one of the first targeted removals that we see and that's lacking a little bit Erdwall illuminator is a one three spirit it costs two flying when you investigate for the first time you you investigate an additional time very synergistic i like it junk winder five six serpent costs seven affinity for tokens which you have plenty with your clues and then whenever a token enters the battlefield on your control tap target no land permanent and opponent controls it it doesn't untap during its controller's next untap step so effectively putting a stun counter on it um hmm 
I don't know, it's fairly expensive. It is a way to tap stuff, but for this cost at this lot, perhaps there's better. If you don't have better, you can keep it in. It is synergistic with the deck in that way, but that's it. And we have ongoing investigation enchantment, and it costs two. Whenever one or more creatures you control, you common damage to a player, investigate one or more. That's annoying, but at least you get to at least investigate. And then uh, for two with green this time, exile a creature card from your graveyard, you get to investigate and you gain two life. Um, extra investigation. If you have better ways to create investigate to investigate, then use that. Otherwise, yeah, keep it. It's not super great because the limits to only one, but again, you have so many things creating those tokens and if you can use them, go for it. Whirler Rogue is a 2-2 human rogue artificer, costs four and when it enters the battlefield, you create two 1-1 one, one Coralist Thopter artifact creature tokens for flying. Tap two untap artifacts so you can't, you control target creature, can't be blocked this turn. Nope, no, I see why you're doing it. I know why you're doing it and I get it. I do and I understand it, but I think it's not as synergistic as it could be and there are better cards. Then we have Graph Mole is a 2-4 mole beast that costs three, it's green. Whenever you sacrifice a clue, you gain three life. That's actually not too bad because initially you will be doing that quite a bit and even not just initially. So that makes transforms them into food tokens as well. Yeah, not bad at all, I like. Ovenwald Mysteries, it costs three, it's an enchantment, it's green. Whenever a non-token creature control dies, you investigate. Whenever you sacrifice a clue, you create a 1-1 human soldier token. Very nice. I like this because it replaces a lot of the cards. Very nice. Oh, Wilderness Reclamation. One good way to ramp. It's an enchantment. It costs four. It's green at the beginning of your end step on top of lands you control. It's a special way of doing certain things. It's just mainly instant mind when you play in your opponent's turn or your upkeep. Wave Sifter. 3-2 elemental, costs 5, Simic, Fine, when it enters the battlefield, you investigate twice and you can evoke it, so you may cast a spell for its evoke cost if you do its sacrifice when it enters the battlefield. I mean, an extra way of creating tokens, yeah, it's synergistic, no, I wouldn't keep it there. Arcane Signet, of course, then we have Azuria Signet, the Simic Signet, uh, Soul Ring, Talisman, 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 I really love that they start including the Talismans in the decks, I think it makes the mana base that much better. Azurius Chancery, uh, Magnifying Glass, it uh, allows you to continuously investigate by tapping four. Um, think that it's not a bad one, it creates tokens, but there are better ways and artifacts to duplicate your tokens that might be better used than this one. If you don't have them, then keep it. Command Tower, Crows and Verge, Lonely Sandbar, Path of Master Stream, Relic Query Tower. Okay, so that's good. I was hoping to see the Relic Query Tower. Then we have Seaside Citadel, Secluded Step, Selesnia, Sanctuary, Semi Growth Chamber. Some of these lands just make me shake my head. Temple of the False God, Tranquil Thicket. And you don't have the, uh, what is it? The, the artifact that gives you unlimited um, hand size. So you have the Relic Query, but you don't have the other one. Oh well, uh, that's so strange, but it's something that I was expecting because they tend to do that in decks. <laughs> I don't know why. For example, in the uh, in the recon one, um, I think even the playing game, they both had these cards. And now this one doesn't have it, which is the one that has the most draw out of all of them. Hey, oh. Anyway, you have three planes, six islands, and then five forests. So what is the final verdict? I think the deck is quite fun. I think out of the three ones that we've reviewed so far, it is definitely the most synergistic one. You, you have very few cards. You have, what, five cards that are creatures that are not really synergistic. And the other ones that we've discussed about, I think it's a very synergistic deck. It is well built. It is lacking in interaction for sure. It is lacking in protection as well, which are big things in commander games. It is lacking as well in ramp, which I was hoping and expecting a little bit more of that. And um, as I said, it, it, it has the issue of the jack of all trades because it's trying to go the route, okay, draw and uh, okay, create tokens and okay, put plus one, plus one counters. I think because of that, it hurts it quite significantly. Um, whereas if it had gone only two routes, then it would have been perfect. And all the routes that you needed to go down were these ones, right? So the draw is fine. You can draw more cards, but, um, and that kind of happens simultaneously when with the, the investigate, um, but you either go 
with what the commander does, which is getting more plus one plus one counters, or you're just moving a little bit too farther away for it. And uh, Sophia um, as well just doesn't sense a bit underwhelming because it's, you don't have a lot of dog creatures that I've seen, uh, if any at all, to be fair. So you can only copy those dog tokens and again, going down that route. Say so it has some good board wipes. I would maybe change one of them. An interesting Planeswalker. The artifacts are okay. Some are to be, you know, let, leave something to desire, but it's not bad. Overall, I think this deck, I really wanted to give it like, it was going so well, and then it just kind of fell off the, 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 the table. I think I'll give it a seven as like the Recon one, mainly because of all the issues that we discussed. And the fact that when a deck starts to do too many things at once, it's just not saying, just, I'm not saying it's a bad deck at all. I'm just saying that the cards inside could have been a little bit more tidied up. You have no interaction better draw would have been necessary because blue has so much good draw there are so many better things they could have done even cheaply without having to go overboard and yeah there are some cards that really don't make sense um as usual but other than that that's it if you agree or if you don't agree if you have anything to add to this please let us know in the comments down below as we read and reply to every one of them and if you like this video and want to see more stay tuned to the channel make sure to like and subscribe as it does help small channels like ours a lot and until the next one we wish you a lovely day a blessed day be good be kind and we'll see you in the next video bye